you got to look at the market. Um, you got to make a wise decision as when it's a good time to really quit your job and go for it. Um, and what are your fallback plans? But everybody can buy a rental property. To your point, back to the, you know, buy four. Everybody can live below your means and come up with enough down payment to buy a rental property. So yeah, start absolutely. there. You undoubtedly want to become financially free. Frankly, who wouldn't? But can you do it with a W-2? Or do you have to become an entrepreneur? Ken McElroy put out a video just this morning, at least that's when I saw it, talking about you will never get rich with your job. So I thought Anna Kelly and I should have a conversation about this because I frankly think Anna Kelly and I are living proof that a job is pretty awesome if you use it <laughs> the right way. So Anna, how does that headline hit you? Absolutely. I, I think that the, the headline never get rich being an employee is false for sure. I know plenty of rich people who are employees and they love their jobs and they happen to make really good money doing it. Now, is it a good idea to have financial freedom? Can you get richer once you're fully focused on growing your wealth? Yes. But to me, having that job is what allows most people to have their needs sustained so that they can then start working on growing wealth, either as, you know, if you look at the cash flow quadrant that we've all looked at for Robert Kiyosaki as an investor, a solopreneur, or an entrepreneur. So there's three options that are not an employee, but for most people, you're going to need to start as an employee, create a good income, and then use that income to grow wealth in one of those other three quadrants. Yeah, it's really funny because, again, I've, I've been lucky enough, as have you, to kind of bump around this growing real estate you know, uh, club where as you grow and get bigger, you, you bump into more entrepreneurs like Ken McElroy of that size. Massive, massive, massive. Yeah. but And he's a great guy, by the way. I haven't seen the video. Um, I yeah. agree with a lot of what he says often. I'm sure it was the headline and he probably riffed on it a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I really like Kenny a lot. No, I, yeah, I'm, this is not disparaging of Kenny. I'm of I'm just course. picking on the, just picking of on the course. title. Yeah. yeah. I disagreed with this title. So <laughs> the blame it on yeah. me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's really, it's really, this is important. One of the things that I have spent the last six years since I've been retired, getting people to understand is you only need four. A lot of folks press this bigger is better if you don't have a hundred, you're a loser or whatever. And that is just not true. I think f simply four rental properties owned over 30 years will fundamentally change your retirement and likely your next generation's retirement. What do you yeah, think? Of absolutely. That? If you look at four homes, let's just say they're 250, which used to be kind of medium. Now that's below average for <laughs> home value. But even four that are worth 250 today, if you pay them off in 20 years, that's a million dollars worth of equity that you have in your building. And that assumes no appreciation. So if you have enough appreciation to keep up with inflation, plus about 1%, which you and I've looked over the past 50 years, you've exactly. had at least 1% per year inflation adjusted appreciation, you're going to be doing really well. You know, you'll be a millionaire in 20 years. And so mm -hmm. that is a surefire way that you could work a job and just have four, like you said, have that coming in passively. And it may take 20 years, you know, to build you real wealth, but that you've also got some cash flow along the way and some tax deductions along the way, which are very beneficial too. So um, again, you know, I, I do tell certain young people if they're, a, if they are married and they have a spouse that has a really stable job and their needs are met and they're entrepreneurial in spirit, and they just know, I don't want to be an employee. I want to create something. Then it's like, live on your other spouse and come and go for it, right? Go straight to the solopreneur, the investor, the entrepreneur. Um, but unless you have that or you're really young and you're living at home. And, you know, I've encouraged my kids as well. If, if those that are entrepreneurial and not all of them are, not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur. Um, but those that are, it's like live at home. You know, you're going to have to contribute. You're not just going to live in the basement, you know, till you're 40, but um, you can live at home, you know, while we allow you to, you know, explore trying to build something and yeah. um, and contributing. So I, I think that it's important to 
to understand when it's wise to to just go straight to entrepreneurship if that's what you think you want to do to get rich um, versus when it's foolish. Um, and then using all the opportunity um, and the resources that you have to allow you to explore whether you're meant to be an entrepreneur or whether you desire to be an entrepreneur or whether you're just bent, um, your, your makeup is better off as an employee seeking a high dollar income that allows you to then invest to grow your wealth instead. Yeah, one of the things that I've noticed uh, around creators who are very successful entrepreneurs is sometimes they forget how hard it is to start and also yeah. how many people fail. Because when right. I really think, when I step back and I look at the 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 collection of options. There is no doubt in my mind that being a successful entrepreneur and kind of getting that escape velocity allows you a much, much, much greater upside without yes. question. However, when we look at the totality and the risks, it is also skewed towards the entrepreneur. A lot, a lot more people fail than win. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So this is this is why it's a big deal to me. I, I you for you and I have I think had this conversation. I think the W two the job right the J O B the just over broke needs to be looked at as a key to financial freedom and not a prison. Right. 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 Your your job gets you the best rates. Your job allows you to you know house hack or you know buy a home, live it in a year, move on with three and a half percent down. You're not going to get that with a DSCR loan or you know, some other lending program. So I right. hate it when successful entrepreneurs kind of poo-poo the employee, because I would argue that you and I are naturally born employees. We are very good at it. We we chose we chose a route that not many people make, which was to live below mm -hmm. our means and grind right. for a decade. Right. But you could get rich as an employee. For sure. Yeah. You know, if, if you, if you just think about, you know, I, I told my son, Dane, we talked about this uh, maybe a couple of years ago when he was going into college, I said, as long as you, um, you know, you come out with your degree, um, hopefully without any debt, but I said, think of how much you really need to live on as a single guy, not married, no kids, right? We figured it out. Now, now, fair, this was three years ago. So we've had a little inflation, but at the time it was $2,000. Yeah. I need $2,000 a month to live on. And if you could house hack a property, buy it USDA or FHA, three and a half percent down, he could live for free, completely yep. for free. So his yep. tenants would pay his rent and he could live for free. And then $2,000 a month would give him enough for food, gas, the gym, you know, a few memberships, everything that he really needed. Um, yeah. So you could be financially free making $2,000 a month. So I said, exactly. if you really want to be an entrepreneur, you could probably build a business pretty quickly that could make you $2,000 a month in today's day and age. There's so many resources to do it. Um, and that could make you financially free. So you may not be rich, but you have your time freedom. And then yeah. if you didn't want to do that right away, but you wanted a full-time job, work 40 hours a week, you'll probably make three or $4,000 a month, at least starting out, maybe even more but you live on that too. And then you could spend that other three on buying more investment property or then building that side hustle, that small business, that entrepreneurship business. So the job gives you the stability um, for just about anybody. Um, and then if you can house hack on top of that, live below your means, then you've got extra time, extra money that you can start investing in the things that are going to grow you wealth and give you more time freedom. So once you make more money passively, then work becomes a little less important. It becomes a little more optional. So maybe you start out 40 hours a week just as your start. That's like your biggest asset is your job to give you the money to give you. And, and only 40 hours a week is really good. If you start out as an entrepreneur or a small business solopreneur, I can guarantee you, you're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week for years before you really build what you could easily make in a nine to five, 40 hours a week. Trust me, I've been there. I've done that. I've been in all four quadrants. Mm -hmm. um, 
So some some people hear and what's touted is you'll have time freedom when you're an entrepreneur. Well, no, it sucks at first. It's hard. It's a lot of hours. It's trial and error. And you don't get paid while you're learning and you're doing. So having that job is really your biggest asset and tool to give you the income to then start side hustle investment, solopreneur, entrepreneur, whatever that is, while you have the ease of a nine to five. And a pretty steady paycheck, you know, if you're in a business that that is stable. So it's an asset. Don't don't be so quick. And this scares me, Michael. I see people probably at least once a month on Facebook. I've quit my full time job today to become a full time real estate entrepreneur and they have no experience. Maybe they've done two deals and it's like, oh, don't quit your job yet. I, I stayed in my job longer than I, I needed and longer than I wanted um, because I realized how stable it was. And I built up the passive income first over a decade before I quit and retired because then I knew I had enough. But you you got to look at the market. Um, you you got to make a wise decision as when it's a good time to really quit your job and go for it. Um, and what are your fallback plans? But everybody can buy a rental property. To your point, back to the, you know, buy four. Everybody can live below your means and come up with enough down payment to buy a rental property. So yeah, start absolutely. there. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I really think your W-2, again, is a key, not a prison. And mm-hmm. but But let's be clear, you've got to make some tough choices. I have not met anybody who had a job that became rich that didn't live below their means for somewhere between five and 10 years. Yes. You have to make tough choices. You you yes. have to like Elena Cardone. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a post I saw her put on, but it still, it still sticks with me. Sacrifice for five years or regret for 50. Yeah. True. What, what True. else? I mean, I'll take the five, please. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, you and I've talked about this a lot, but it's, it's, it's so important. It's foundational. You know, for me, I kind of came up with the term live below your means while you work to expand your means, because if you just expand your means, but then you have lifestyle creep, you're never going to get rich because you're still going to live check to check. Do you know, I mean, 66% of the population today lives check to check. And that includes people that make $250,000 a year. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people make good, good incomes and then they they spend it. Um, you're not going to just save your way to wealth because you've got to make enough above your expenses, you know, to be able to grow. But if you do both at the same time and you make that a lifestyle choice, you're constantly looking at, okay, I got a raise or I'm making another $200 a month on a rental property. Now let me see how I can cut another hundred dollars a month or two instead of let's now go spend that extra one or two you you know if you're constantly saying where can i cut what do i really not enjoy that i spend money on that's really a waste that would be better suited toward investing in my future and how can i expand my needs i'm always thinking about both of those things because one without the other it's going to take you double the time to get wealthy than it would if you just make you know if it's if you're making that sacrifice for five years, 10 years, if you can focus on both at the same time, you can really grow your wealth and your assets and your cash flow very, very quickly compared to people that don't do both. Yeah. At the end of the day, folks, if you want to get started, it's all about discretionary income. Not how much you make, not what you have after taxes called net. It's how much you have at the bottom. That discretionary income becomes seeds. Seeds get watered. Stuff grows. You do it for 10 years. You get wealthy. Anna, this has been an amazing conversation. I just thought of number two, but before we get there, where can people find you? You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom, on my playlist on your channel, Michael. And you can find me for coaching and deal review advice and uh, consulting at AnnaKellyInvesting.com. Thank you so much.